Hello, my name is Jillian Garcia, and I will be discussing my new position as a technical training designer at Paycom in the summer of 2023. This is the last credit that I need to earn my Master of Arts in Professional and Technical Communication from the University of North Texas. In this presentation, I'll begin by discussing the hiring process, company, and work environment. I'm also going to discuss my job duties and the software and tools I use to complete them. I'll demonstrate two work samples and discuss the context for them and how they were created. Finally, I'll conclude by talking about the lessons I've learned from this job, the greatest challenges I've encountered, and how my coursework at UNT prepared me for this role. First, allow me to introduce myself. I am a grad track student at the University of North Texas, which means that I earned some graduate credit at the same time as my undergraduate credit in order to accelerate my degree plan. I earned my Bachelor of Science in Professional and Technical Communication in the spring of 2022, and I will earn my Master of Arts in December of 2023. Prior to accepting the position with Paycom, I worked for several years as a writing tutor in UNT's Department of Technical Communication. In my free time, I enjoy catching up on old video games, knitting socks, and learning new piano pieces. Paycom is a software company that provides online payroll services and HR software solutions to businesses of all sizes and across many industries. These industries include healthcare, hospitality, education, and more. Paycom has several main locations, a headquarter in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, a grapevine location in Texas, and a North Texas hub or NTH in Irving, Texas, which is where I work. I was initially only seeking internships. I began looking for internships in August of 2022 and filtering for industry keywords for tech writers on LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, etc. None of these opportunities worked out though, and in the spring of 2023, I decided to expand my search to include full-time positions rather than just internships. And I began broadening my search outside of exclusively tech writing positions. After discovering this position on Indeed, I completed a pretty standard online application which asked about past work experience and things like that. Next, I was invited by email to a virtual one-on-one -on -one interview with my now manager. After this interview, my manager asked me to create a video teaching her and her team something new. It didn't have to be technical, it just had to be informative, accessible, and clear. This was the most interesting part of the hiring process. I decided to take a risk by going the authentic route, creating a video over a non-technical topic that I'm personally passionate about, knitting. I created a training video explaining how to begin a knitting project. It worked out well. After I submitted this instructional video, the team invited me for a final virtual interview, which I appreciated. I received an offer a few days later, and the recruiter told me specifically that the team appreciated that I addressed each person by name and asked them a question about their job. I was hired on April 24th of 2023, and I fall in the development or dev department. I work closely with software developers, team leads or TLs, and everyone else involved in product development. I also work directly with four teammates who share my job title. Three of these teammates are based in Oklahoma City, which means that virtual communication is critical to our success. We all work fully in person, five days a week, and I come in from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. My team wears many different hats and we have a wide variety of backgrounds and skill sets. Next, I'll talk more about what I do each day in my new position. One of our primary responsibilities as technical training designers is acting as a touch point for new hires in dev. When developers are first hired, they don't know who their team or team lead or team leads will be until about their third or fourth week. My team fills that gap while they're in training and we're their primary contact and support during this time. We onboard anywhere from three to sometimes 30 or more new hires every week, and we host several informative meetings on a recurring weekly schedule. We welcome new hires and help them access all their Paycom accounts on their first day in the office. 
Then we leave campus tours of the building and troubleshoot authentication issues with these accounts on their first day. Next, we assign training for new hires, update their training paths and courses in the Learning Management System or LMS, track their training progress, reset quizzes, and approve GitLab merge requests. All of this occurs on a weekly basis since we onboard a new group of devs each week. After getting to know each hire personally throughout the week, we set meetings for them with different development teams to see if they would be a good match. This requires us to have a wide breadth of technical knowledge about Paycom and its products, as well as knowledge about the qualities that each of the 60 plus development teams is looking for in new developers. Overall, we ensure new hires are able to complete their development training and have a smooth transition into their new job. Our team is also responsible for creating internal video training content, from script writing and filming to editing and eventually publishing. First, we must coordinate with subject matter experts, or SMEs, to meet and discuss their goals and wishes for the training. We instruct them to develop a script and review the script with them to ensure it's clear and informative. Next, video content is recorded live in a studio or as a PowerPoint presentation through Zoom, or sometimes both with picture in picture. After recording, my team edits the content, which may include trimming, adding transitions, cutting out mistakes, and adding lower thirds. We also have to create accurate closed captions and convert them to an acceptable file format. Finally, we properly label and tag the content before uploading it to its final destination in the LMS. While creating training content is a major part of our role, this task does take a backseat during the summer as we manage the highest volume of new hires during this season. Because new hires are currently our first priority, I have had a bit less exposure to this side of my role. However, I have edited and captioned around eight training videos so far. I use a variety of tools for my job. On a daily basis, I use Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Jira, Confluence, and Snagit. These tools I use primarily for virtual communication, reference, and for managing training progress for new hires. I also use Camtasia, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere Pro, and Adobe Media Encoder, as well as Subtitle Edit, although a bit less frequently. I use those tools about once per week and exclusively when working with training videos. The following two samples are examples of documents I've created that we use during the onboarding process at the North Texas Hub on a new hire's first day. Both of these documents are given to new hires at the same time, and both required me to heavily consider the reader's needs and to identify their questions in advance. This first sample is a document that provides logistical information, such as building and parking information. New hires learn a lot of information their first day at a four hour orientation before we even meet them. And we believe it's important to give them a tangible document that's easy to read. After my first few weeks, I created a list of the most frequent questions from new hires to identify gaps in their understanding. I also considered things that I myself was confused about on my first day. I used second person, user-centered language and formatted the document with short paragraphs and bullet points for readability. While this is a fairly short document, I created it with a sense of empathy at the forefront of my process with the guiding questions, what did I need to know on my first day, and what do the readers need to know on their first day? The second document is also a resource for new hires. This procedural document instructs new hires on downloading software to access their virtual machine, as well as how to access their Paycom learnings and navigate the system. This document took more time to create as it's more technical than the first document. This document existed when I was hired, but a variety of external circumstances required a major overhaul. I edited this document for clearer language using second person reader centered verbiage again to remain consistent with procedural best practices. I also rewrote the directions to make more sense from a chronological perspective. I tested out the directions on a teammate and edited in multiple passes to ensure that the directions are accurate and that they make sense. In particular, the second page of this document titled Getting Started Day 2 
is a follow along guide that new hires use while working from home on a Zoom meeting with me and my team. This meeting can sometimes double in length if we run into redundant troubleshooting questions or issues, so this guide was created to streamline the process and reduce the number of technical snags that new hires encounter when completing their setup. In the last section of this presentation, I will reflect on the main lessons I've learned, the greatest challenges I've encountered, and how my coursework prepared me for this role. While plain language has always been an interest of mine while studying technical communication, I had no idea how important this concept would be in the workforce. My whole job is training in everything related, so clear, concise communication is vital to everyone's success. Being primarily a writing student, I'm used to following plain language standards when creating written content. However, I underestimated the importance of carefully choosing your language in the realm of verbal communication. For example, I am learning to run some of the recurring weekly informational meetings. If I am too wordy or too indirect, etc., these meetings will run much longer than they need to. I also have to answer more questions from new hires about topics that I have already covered in the meeting. However, the more time I spend preparing and thinking about my language, the fewer questions people have because they understood the first time. Ultimately, plain language saves time and nurtures greater understanding. I am already a more effective communicator in every way after two months in this position. However, perhaps the most important thing I've learned at this job is how to ask good questions. My tasks themselves are fairly straightforward and I enjoy learning to use new tools and software. However, my greatest challenge has been learning the processes, schedule, and general flow of each day. My team encourages everyone to ask questions, which is such a great help. Until now, I haven't always been the best at asking questions, preferring to learn or figure it out on my own. This may work on school assignments, but not in a collaborative office setting. I have had to step out of my comfort zone and learn to ask specific, quality questions so I can do my best work. As a result, I've learned much faster and more efficiently than I might have had I kept my questions to myself. As I stated previously, one major challenge for me was learning the processes in a brand new professional context. The learning curve was steeper than I expected when learning to use the Paycom system and understanding the onboarding process. However, this is a perfect example of a situation that forced me to ask quality questions so I could learn. Another challenge I encountered was balancing virtual and face-to-face -face communication standards. Having had several years of experience in both environments, I was well prepared for them individually. However, this is the first time I've had to switch back and forth so many times per day between face-to-face -face and virtual communication. I had a hard time at first adjusting to the differences in communication standards, but after a couple months here, I think I've adjusted well to the different modalities of communication that we use. The last challenge I want to talk about is empathy and understanding. This wasn't necessarily a challenge as far as struggling, but rather I didn't expect empathy to be such a huge part of what I do every day. When I first began my job search, I anticipated creating content for a non-technical audience. However, my audience is made up of new developer hires who all have a stronger technical background than me. I had to learn a new type of empathy when writing for a technical audience, and I had to identify a different set of needs for them. The privilege of becoming personally invested in their success as fledgling developers is my favorite part of the job and I learn more about the needs of new hires after every group moves through the process. I knew that my education would prepare me for a job, but I was extremely surprised by just how much the course has prepared me, especially for this specific role. TECM 5550 and TECM 5290 in particular helped me gain incredibly relevant skills in preparing and delivering instructional content, which is a huge part of my everyday tasks. Additionally, TECM 5280 taught me how to design effective and appropriate documents, and I used many of those document design lessons when creating and editing the two samples that I pictured earlier. Finally, 
TECM 5191 gave me concrete skills in using different types of software I hadn't used before. In particular, the segment of that class covering instructional training content and video production was an enormous help in adjusting to the video production part of my job. Overall, I absolutely love my position. I never expected to work in technical training after graduation, but it's such a fantastic fit for me and my personality. My coursework at UNT prepared me more for this specific role than I ever expected. I can't wait to learn more in the coming months. Thank you.